So if you can go to our base scripture, from John 15, 1 through 2, the Amplified verse. It says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Everything, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes. He doesn't stop, y'all. It's levels to this thing. So that it will bear more fruit, but check this out, even richer and finer fruit. So if you look at your neighbor and say, you got to withstand the pain. And look at it one more time just to confirm it's no pain, no gain, no, no pain, no gain. All right. It's going to hurt a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is in order to understand it out to the next, you must prepare your mind for the pain of the pruning season, right? So let's define pruning in a natural sense. Pruning a bush or a tree, right? By cutting away dead, overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fullness and growth. You could be full of mess. I'm going to put it that way. And you will never, ever grow because your capacity is low. It's, it's shrunken. You don't, you don't have room to grow. So in order for God to use you in a different capacity, he got to prune you for what he thinks is better growth for you. Get rid of the dead stuff. Get rid of the disease stuff. Get rid of the stuff that you don't need. So that's what I want to talk about today. Is I want to focus on the things that you don't need. And when I give you this message, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. In order to prune a tree, you must cut it. Cut away the, the, the disease thing that's causing you not to grow. Have you ever bought a, like a bushel of oranges and you just picked the bag up and when you got home, it was one that was a little softer than the other one? You couldn't tell by looking at it that it was decaying from the inside out. But when you, once you put it on the shelf, guess what happened? It touched the other fruit that was in the basket and it spread it, the disease to the other fruit in the basket. What God is saying to you is, don't be that rotten fruit. I remember the message a couple of weeks ago when, uh, you know, Apostle Flanagan, when he was talking about being lame, right? It's the same concept. You can be in a church and be a lame believer. What are you doing? What are you preparing yourself for what God has for your life? about pruning in the Bible. So pruning in the Bible is a metaphor for how God works in our lives to shape us into the people he desires us to be. God removes unfruitful and unnecessary things from our lives so we can thrive spiritually. Now you, you're probably going to like this one. Pruning is a form of discipline that stems from love. Now, you're thinking, my God, God, you're cutting me. I'm bleeding. But you're doing it out of love? But it hurts, God. But it's necessary for growth. And, and God prunes believers to guide them towards spiritual maturity and deeper relationship with him. So I asked you today, Emmanuel, the connection, are you ready to be pruned? Are you ready to be cut? When you cut something that is diseased, you remove the impurities on the inside. If it's a diseased body, when you cut it, it releases pressure and tension from the body. So I want you to have it's five takeaways from this message today. Pruning is a reoccurring metaphor used to describe God's transformative 
work in the lives of believers. In scripture, pruning often refers to God's love, yet sometimes painful process of cutting away sinful habits, unwise actions, unfruitful pursuits from our lives. But this is the good thing about it. Pruning encourages growth, yes. discipline, holiness, greater fruitfulness as we cooperate with God's refining work in our hearts and lives. Their season of pruning. If you notice, this is an actual pruning season. Now, think about this. God gave me this almost a month ago. He gave, I don't know when he gave Doc the message, but this is when you know you're in the right place at the right time. <laughs> because when you're doing something, when your spiritual father is doing something, it should be some synergy in that. Yes. You, should be a, you should be able to pick, on some, pick up on some things that he's doing. That's right. Amen. And you have to ask yourself, Emmanuel, the connection. If you're not picking up on those things, if you're not receiving that synergy, something's not quite right. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just delivering the message. Because God does it in a way where, you know what? It, you're like, man, how did that happen? How did that connect? How did they get sewn together that way? Because God. Remember, he's divine dresser. Okay? So he knows what we need. Believers can trust God through seasons of pruning. That's it, Raul. Y'all got to trust him through this season. Pruning, knowing that he prunes out of love for our good. It's time to get cut, y'all. So we're going to talk about it. Four areas of pruning. Four areas of pruning. The first one is, I'm, I'm, is excuses. I was going to use a, an example where I was stepping down on the steps and I elevate myself to a, where I'm at now. But can't do that. So I'm going to use probably one step and you, gotta, you get the message, right? So excuses. My spiritual father says excuses is what? Smoke screens for what? The uncommitted, right? Smoke screens from the uncommitted. That means you're not committed to what God has for you. So this is what happens to people. Why do people make excuses anyway? Why, why, why do we do that? It's three, it traces back to one of three things. Fear, uncertainty, or lack of purpose. That's why you make excuses. I'm going to give you a little story, real quick like. Back in basic training when I was going through Maroon, Marine boot camp, I had to jump off a 50-foot tower. Now, I had to get my mind right because I'm, I'm, I'm at the edge of this building. Imagine standing on the edge of a building looking 50 feet down. Now, you got to trust all your training that everything's going to work all right. Now, they got this one gentleman at the bottom of on the ground, 50 feet down, he has a rope. He's attached to you, right? So check this out. What you got to do is you just got to take one step, just leap. Don't jump, but you just take one step and drop. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I pump myself up. Oh, going to do it, right? I leaped because of my adrenaline. Today, you can see the scars. I'll show them if you want to see them. I got scars on my arm. They never went away. Is where I had confidence, y'all, that I was going to get it done. I wasn't really uncertain because I was trained, you know. But did I really trust the person holding the rope at the bottom? <laughs> so that's like, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So when I jumped, I broke the rope because you can break yourself. I jumped out and I broke the rope too, too quick and the rope snapped back, took all, put the skin off of my arm, right? I was bleeding, y'all. 
it was, it was nasty. It burnt really bad. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lesson with this message is that it's about the trust. And what I was doing is I trusted my, myself, but I didn't trust the person on, down, on, down on the ground, right? So I started making excuses in my own mind about what I was going to do, how I was going to come back that situation. Not talking to the person that down below, but myself. So I had a conversation with myself. And in my own mind, I'm right. In my own mind, I'm right. Okay. So if you can put up the scripture, Proverbs 16 and 2, Passion Verse, if you could real quickly. Man, y'all are doing an awesome job, uh, T. Awesome job. It says, we are all in love with our own opinions. Convinced they are correct. But the Lord is in the midst of us, testing and probing our every motive. You know when they asked you to go to that event, you didn't want to go. You knew it. So what you did was you used your children to get out of it. <laughs> oh man, I gotta go, I gotta go take my, my, my kids to this, this event. You know, we got this, this, this sporting event we have to go to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that to not go to your event. Again, y'all, don't, 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 don't kill the messenger, please. Please don't do it. So in your own mind, you did it so much, you believed it. I'm doing the right thing. I love my kids. I love my kids. I'm telling them I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Really? But what God, what did God tell you? So, whoo, man, I tell you. I don't know if y'all gonna like this message today, y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Put Proverbs 24 and 12. New Living Translation up there. <laughs> Don't excuse yourself by saying, look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you. He who guards your soul knows you, knows you knew. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. Mm -hmm. Man, it's getting, it's getting a little tight in here today. I'm sorry. It's getting a little tight in here, but I was in the synergy of my spiritual father today. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> That's what we say. <laughs> so that's excuses, y'all. So God said, we need to remove excuses in order for me to use you at the maximum capacity that you can be used. You think you got it going on by doing these things for your kids. I ain't saying nothing wrong with that. But you got to put it in perspective. Okay? Put it in perspective. Okay, man, I got I, I to move quickly, y'all. That's, that's the first thing. So please write the excuses. So you got to cut excuses out. Okay? That's, that's the first cut. The second cut is envy. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Envy. In almost every case, envy arises when, when our when experiences of satisfaction in our own, when we have dissatisfaction in our own lives. So, so, so what you're trying to tell me is it don't have nothing to do with that person. It's dissatisfaction in my life. So, so because of that, I'm going to envy that other person. Wow. Really? Really? So I, I got some flaws. God said, yep, you do. I'm going to call them out today. It's when we so badly just, whoo, this is, this is tough right here, y'all. I don't know how y'all going to take this one. Uh, it's when we so badly desire and yearn for success, connection, or affection from others. And when we don't get it, that's what we do. I'm going to read that again. So I want, I want this, you to soak, soak this in. We yearn so much 
Oh, God, I want it. I want it, God. It's got to be from God. I heard from God. I'm heard from, heard from God. I want the success. I want the connection like somebody else. But you have no idea what that person did to get there. I want affection from others. Doc, why are you calling my name, man? Doc, I'm doing great and wonderful things. Why are you not calling me? Why are you not calling my name? Oh, it's about Doc? Oh, it's about Doc? Oh, I thought this I thought this was about God. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. This is this is just getting a little we cutting today, y'all. We, we, we cutting today. It ain't nothing wrong with a little bleeding. It ain't nothing wrong with we got bad days for you. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. That will kill you. You can't even run your own race because you're looking at somebody else's race. God has things right in front of you, but you gazing over here. And you can't see what God has right in front of you because your neck is hurting from looking at somebody else. <laughs> I'm sorry. Love you. If you if you're constantly work, waking up with a crook in your neck, you might want to check yourself. Could you put please put up Proverbs 3, 31 through 32, please? All right. Mm, 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 mm. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the up. up. You over there looking at somebody that did, they got it, but they didn't. <laughs> it might not be legal, y'all. You gazing at that person, but you don't know what he's doing in his household. You don't know what she's doing in their household. You have no idea. You don't know they driving Mercedes, they doing this, got a pocket full of money, balling. Balling. Perverse. You have no idea. Now, while you looking at somebody else, God has said, look, I'm putting this plan right in front of you. I'm trying to order your steps. But for some reason, you acting like a drunk man and keep wobbling. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Now, Doc Rock taught us this. E plus R equals O. Your environment plus how you respond to it will equal your outcome. You can't show up at a corporate me meeting acting a fool. I'm qualified. Yeah, you might be, but your actions show a little different. I'm qualified. I got a master's degree. But, you, but you're not talking like it. Okay? Your outcome, how you treat people, it's a big deal, y'all. Oh, yeah. Don't, again, this is not my message. This is God's message to you. Whether you receive it or not, that's not up to me. That's up to you. Okay. Sometimes in order to achieve your goals, you must help someone else to achieve theirs. Woo-wee! Yeah. You know, one thing that I learned is if I'm having a problem, I'm having an issue, instead of bellying over my issue, I'm going to help that same person with that same problem. And guess how? Guess what God's going to do? He's going to fix yours in the midst of it. You got a money problem? You got a soul, baby. <laughs> 
You got a health problem? How about taking somebody some soup when they're sick? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, God will bless that. Yeah. In the midst of you, in the midst of you getting in your car, driving over to Susie May's house, God already got a plan to fix your your, your issues. And while you tripping and coughing in the car, God said, you know what? Don't worry about it. When you get home, it's already a done deal. We're going to fix you right on up. If you got a money problem, if you got $5 in your pocket right now, and you you, 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 you scared to sold three of them, go ahead and take the three out. But that $5 ain't going to get you nothing anyway. You, are, you might as well believe in God and what he got for you. Doubt is the next cut. Doubt. Now, this is a little long because I had to work on this one, y'all. See, I'm going to step on the first step. Okay? And imagine me being on the bottom. The bottom is excuses, okay? The second step is envy. Now I'm moving on up, okay? I made excuses, and then I start seeing everybody else winning, even though I knew they wasn't quite right. But they were winning anyway. Then I start feeling sorry for myself, okay? I start looking like, God, dog, it ain't gonna never happen for me. I've been in this church for 15 years. Ain't nothing happened for me yet. Okay? That's where you are. That's doubt. Now you're doubt. Now you're doubting God. Now you're doubting that it's gonna ever happen for you. Even though you're believer, even though you're faithful, going to church, sit down in the seat, they're like, God is not gonna let it happen for you. Doubt. Cut it. If you could go to James 1, 5 through 8, please. Amplified version or translation, I'm sorry. Okay. James 1. Okay. Yeah, you, you go. I'm going I'm to read, read, read 5 and then you will catch up back up on 6. I see what you did there. That's okay. You didn't get that. That's my fault. I added to it. That's what God gave me last night. I added to it. I'm sorry. It happens, y'all. God changes your plan just like that. All right. I'm going to read five, and then we're going to roll right into six. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom to, to God, that's, that's, that's five. That's James 1, 5 through 8. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of benevolent God who gives to everyone generously without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. Put it back up. You can put it back up there. Appreciate it. Start with six. It says, but he must ask for wisdom in faith. I'm going to stop right there. Faith. You got to have faith in order to get through this yeah. without doubt. Okay? You got to have faith. It's just, like, it's just like those three Hebrew boys. But I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay? Now, give me about five minutes. I'm going to hit that up. Without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a bellowing surge of sea that is blown away and tossed by the wind. You're tossed by the wind. You have no direction because you doubt. Your faith is, is, is weak because now you've reached to a point where, you know, you've been doing some things for God you think you have, and you, get, you reach a point, you, you see other people winning, but you ain't progressing. That's where doubt sets in. Okay, go to seven. Seven. For such a person to think of or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. You're not going to get anything from the Lord. See, this is what God tells you in, in verse eight. He says, being double-minded man, unstable, and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, and decides. You are messed up. You, you, you can't make a decision. Every time you make a decision, it's the wrong decision in your mind because you're like, I, I, I don't know, God. That ain't how God wants you to operate. He wants obedience immediately. Obedience immediately. Hey, so $100 to this person. Oh, I don't know about that, God. No. Doubt. Immediately. So we got to get to a place of maturity Manual of the Connection, where we got to do immediate blessings to others. Yeah. Yeah. We got to stop thinking about it too much. Oh, let me think about it for a week. Really? God told you to sow it to this person. You, you doubt God? 
you know, I, I'm not going to go there because, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. No, no I'm not going to go there because it's, it's, about, it's about giving. And, and, and if, if you don't, you're not going to receive. So let's talk about that faith thing. God giving faith. Three Hebrew, Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know who they are. Because they wouldn't bow down to the statue. They don't bow down to idealism. They, I'm not going to do that. But they had a strong enough faith that they probably knew they were going to die. It was thrown into the, the furnace of fire. Now, you got to have, I don't know, some of y'all ain't got that kind of faith, y'all. No. You ain't got that kind of faith. Knowing you're going to go into the fire, do you really believe? Do you really believe? Those three Hebrew, Hebrew boys, they were thrown into the fire. Regardless of the outcome, they were committed to their faith. Even when faced with painful death, because of the faith, God delivered them from the evil. In doing so, brought the mighty king of Babylon to his knees. It made him recognize the power of God, y'all. It changed his mind how he thought. You see what I'm saying? And that's what he does to our enemies. So what, don't be tripping, okay? I got to hurry up, God. Man, that's, man, I got 11 minutes. I got several things to give, okay? So we talk about, we talk about doubt, right? So what do we talk about? Excuses, okay? We talk about envy, and we talk about doubt. Oh, boy, here come the big one. <laughs> here come the big one. Ego. That's the big one. So now that you, now that you've at the, remain at the bottom, and you've been elevated, you, you, you had excuses, you, you start looking at other people, envy, then you start down God because God didn't bless you. But then God instantly blesses you. Man, you got a million dollars. All your bills paid for. I got it going on, God. Superman. Right? You got it going on. You doing your thing. And somebody call you in need of, need of prayer or need, to, need you for, to do something. And they wasn't so-called doing very well. But they needed you. Yeah. Ah, I got this event, got going on, you know, I'm studying. You don't really have the event, but you're using the event. Mm. <laughs> uh, did I say that, y'all? Did I say that out loud? Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. You, 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 you using the event for an excuse because you said, well, I got a whole lot of studying to do. <laughs> You know, don't go on well. That's two weeks away. <laughs> That's two weeks away. So what you do is you use it as an excuse. And then you start pumping your chest out. Ego. You running with the big dogs now. I'm on these committees. I'm doing very well. Look at me. Got your way right. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Little Pete. How y'all doing, little folks? <laughs> How y'all doing? Well, check this out, because I got to hurry up. While the word ego does not appear in the Bible, concepts and principles regarding ego certainly do. They certainly do. How about pride and arrogance? How about that? Same thing. Same thing, y'all. Ego. The opposite of ego is what? Humility. <laughs> Humility. So that's what we do. We got to be humble. And we, this is what we do. We got to give, we got to give God the credit. So when you winning, when you winning, you say, hey, you deflect. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, all is you doing it. Glory to God. You know, keep you doing it. Glory to God. Pastor B, you're doing it. Glory to God. Power cup over there, y'all. They doing the thing. Power cup. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta recognize things and give give people credit. 
You got to give people credit. And you got to step back and say, whoa, they're doing their thing. Because cause what you, you don't realize what they've been through. I know a little bit. I know a little bit, but I don't know the whole story. But I know one thing that God is using them for his glory. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Now, I want to I wanna clarify some things for you. We always get ego and confidence. Well, I want to tell you the difference between the two. You said, man, he's confident in the Lord. Uh, I don't know. I have to, have, to, have to investigate that. Because it can bleed. Your confidence can bleed to ego when you stop giving God the credit. Now, this is, now, well, it says, while the ego tries to prevent you from acknowledging you may have, self-confidence gives you the strength to acknowledge those deficiencies. <laughs> That's the difference, y'all. You, you're like, I got some deficiencies. And I acknowledge those deficiencies, but in God, I can do it. Not by my own strength, because I need him. Proverbs 22 and 4, you don't have to put it up. It says, true humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. Be humble, y'all. I posted something on Facebook, I don't know, a couple days ago, something like that. And I was talking about, I don't care about likes. I do things when God tells me to do things. Amen. It's not about that. It's not about me. It's about what God is leading me to, yeah. right? I post something about, about this, about the, you know, the eagle and the naysayers. A naysayer is like a crow. Mm -hmm. They'll peck you until they get your attention, and then they'll try to destroy you. Yeah. But this is what an eagle does. I want you to have an eagle mentality. An eagle don't even care about that, that crow. He'll let, him, he'll let him peck him. The eagle is so focused that he needs to rise to a, where he needs to rise, he just keep rising up. Because he knows when he get to a certain level, when he get to a certain level, that nasty, ugly, stinking crow is going to fall off. Because he knows that the crow can't elevate to that level. He knows that he don't have to go back and forth with the crow. All he had to do is keep rising. All he had to do is spread his wings, elevate. That's all he needs to do is elevate to another level. Keep rising. I don't know about you, but is there some eagles out there? Oh, yeah. There's some eagles out there. It's time to soar, eagles. It's time to spread your wings. It's time to don't worry about those crows that's pecking you on the back. Keep rising. Keep rising. Keep rising. You can have a seat. Give me one. Give me a couple more minutes. Don't, don't, don't close me out just yet. Not just yet. Not just yet. Not just yet. Keep rising. I'm going to close with this. It's hard for me, y'all. I had, a lot of you guys know my story. I've had four strokes. Oh, yeah, me. Um, I had four strokes. In the midst of that, God said, I'm about to cut you. I'm going to make you bleed because you reached the level of comfortability and you thought that was all I wanted from you. You did 20 years in the Marine Corps, faced all those things. You've been at war. You've seen people burning up on tanks, dead, lying down on the ground, nasty, stinking. Have you ever smelled uh, flesh burning? You don't know. You don't want that smell. You don't want that smoke. Yet you need to rip that out of your mind. God said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate your orders to another level. He said, you know what? After this last stroke, I know it's bad, 
but I'm a, you're not going to travel for a whole year. And that whole year, God was working on me. Yeah. That whole year, I wrote about 30 sermons. That whole year, Doc Rock knew. He looked at me and said, yeah, you've been writing that down. He knew because the synergy he had with me because he is my spiritual father. And I have a connection like no other with my spiritual father. Oh, yeah, you're going to hear it today. You're going to hear it today. See, I'm going to tell you how, how it really is. Until you have a strong connection with the man of God, how can you elevate when he's elevated, taking you to another level, and you, you can't even hang on because you're not available. Right. When you need to hang on to his, his coattail, just hang on, baby, and, and take the ride. It's time to spread your, spread your wings. It's time to spread your wings. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, God is getting ready to turn this thing upside down. All these believers or unbelievers, I'm telling you, he's getting ready to separate this thing. And God, God getting ready to do something great in this place. And those who are truly connected, I know you heard this before, but I'm here to tell you as a son, if you're truly connected, you're getting ready to rise. Your life is getting ready to change. Things is going to happen in your life you ain't never seen before. You was eating cube steak, but now you're going to be start eating filet mignon. I'm telling you right now. You was, you was, you was eating on a neck bone that didn't have no meat. But you about to get some neck bones that got some meat, baby. I'm telling you right now. God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to bless you. You was on the bottom making excuses, looking at everybody else win, and then you started down God. But God said, you know what? I'm going to elevate you to the stage. I'm going to elevate you to the stage where everybody can take a danger at you and they can look at you. I, when, when I came to this stage this morning, I knew I was sharp. God said, you know what? I'm going to dress you two orders. I want you to wear black and white because there's no gray in me. There's no gray area. There's no gray. It's either black and white. Either you with me or you're not. And I'm here to tell you, I'm with God today. I'm moving to another level today. So it's okay to be cut. It's okay to be bleeding. Okay, God going to fix you up. He got a magnificent hospital. I'm telling you right now, God is going to take you to another level. Right on time. Right on time. I'm out of time, but I'm certainly, certainly not out of word. This is the beginning of a new stage, y'all. I see it. I see it. We're about to take it international again. In a, in a bigger and better way. If your business is attached to this ministry, you're going to flourish. God, get ready to do some new things in your life. You've been pruned today, y'all. It's okay. God is trying to make you bloom fuller than ever. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving me this message, oh Father, in a big and better way, oh Father. I knew when you gave me this message, oh Father, that it was going to do some things in here, oh Father. This is a different time. This is a different season, oh Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are. Bless everybody who's connected to you, oh Father. Call us, oh Father, because if we need it, oh Father. Get rid of those things that are not important in our lives, oh Father. Let's look to you for all the answers, oh Father. You're awesome, God. You're magnificent, God. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.